everybody, Barry Green here for another practice session. Streaming live from Jacksonville, Florida. Another sweltering hot day, Jacksonville. Um, hope everybody's doing okay. So I'm going to uh, just sit here and uh, play a little bit, wait for some people to uh, come, and then uh, do some practicing. <laughs> computer muted. Uh, that was the delayed sound. <laughs> Shit. What am I doing wrong? Oh yeah. Sorry about this. Okay. Even though I think I've got everything all figured out, I make mistakes all the time. All right, let's try that again. Okay. guys doing um, thanks for being here so let me just hang on a little bit and then I'll uh, play some tunes if you guys have any questions uh, please uh, feel free going on so let me I'll just go play a tune uh, before I do I know you guys are hopefully you know that I'm trying to fund a Kickstarter project um, uh, it's uh, a little less than two weeks left to go and uh, at about 45% funded so definitely getting close um, it's the kind of thing that uh, it's all or nothing in other words if it doesn't get funded the project is considered uh, you know unfunded doesn't mean I'm not gonna do the recording but um, I hope that uh, you know I can get enough people to kick in um, to cover, you know, pretty much all the expenses. And anyway, you know the deal. So if you have it in your heart uh, to, to help me out on this, uh, I really appreciate it. And this is the not a matter of just giving uh, in return. You know, you can get uh, you know brand new uh, Barry Green CD. Uh, other things that I'm offering are the CD plus lead sheets. It's a Skype thing. That I'm offering on there. If you're in New Orleans, you've got an open invitation to come to the session, stuff like that. So uh, check out my Kickstarter page. And um, if you feel like contributing, contributing, please do. All right, so let's see if there's any... Uh... <clears throat> okay, got a question from Tim. 
And I, I, somebody emailed me, it was a really good point, that when uh, I tend to not um, answer the, I mean, re repeat the question that is being a uh, asked of me, and people are confused as to what I'm talking about. So Tom is asking, is your right hand touching the bridge when you pick? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a muting thing. If I didn't uh, have it on there, there'd be a lot of string noise. There already is, it's stuff, I, I still hear it occasionally. Uh, but yeah, definitely touching. Yeah, gently, but it's definitely, like I'm not really putting a lot of weight on it, it's just gra you know, grazing it, basically. Um, hey Peter, Wolfgang from Germany. Peter from the UK, this is great. All right, so I'll just play some tunes here. Uh, I'm gonna play a, I, I think last, the last Facebook Live I did, I did six of the original tunes that I'm gonna be recording. So there's two more. I'll play both those today, but uh, I'll, maybe I'll just play play a standard uh, first. So I'm just thinking of a tune to play. Let's see. Um, I should have thought about this beforehand, I guess. Uh, tunes. Ableton live, live broadcasts where I won't have to keep stopping and going, and I can actually launch these loops pretty easily. So, um, so here's a bunch of courses of uh, "You Don't Know What Love Is." That's the song I just played. Um, you don't know what love is. First thing I'm gonna do is tap in a tempo. And this is a lot easier now too. I can just tap it in on this. Do -da, do -da. So that's about, for those of you following along, it's 169. All right, so let's try this Jack Dijonette. Let me see how that sounds. All right, so let's see how I am with this new toy. Here we go.
You don't know what love is. I'm forgetting the composer now, uh, but that's uh... okay. Uh, thank you guys for com uh, compliments. Um, Jamie Kroll, so tasty. Love your playing. What what you suggest to prioritize during short practice sessions? It's a great question. Uh, I still, even when I have short time uh, frames like that, I still try to get to everything. Just little less like you let you are listing a lot of different topics I'll have to admit um, some of these things like I would be able to combine into one like for instance your tune tunes improv and scales I, I would combine that all into one practice session so if, if I were working on this tune for instance right now you don't know what love is it starts in F minor so as far as you know this uh, the tunes, I'm actually working on that right now, obviously, you know, learning the melody, the uh, chord changes. But then the chord scales, I would just work with whatever comes, you know, during the tune. So it's F minor, and I play Dorian, so there's a chance for me to work on playing Dorian, the Dorian mode. You know, for, for me, uh, I've done all of the um, scales starting on each note of the scale with my first finger, which essentially just playing all the modes. And I would go through the guitar like that. And I'm picking this shape first because I end up with the open D string, which is fine, but I'm avoiding any of the open strings. So I'm playing, no, I'm playing the wrong mode. So we talked about uh, Dorian. And then I move up the neck. So then my next note with this. Then here. Sorry. <laughs> Gotta relearn my scales. And et cetera, et cetera. Just up the guitar starting on my first finger. So that would combine the tunes, uh, scales, the improv, the same thing. I would do what I'm doing now, just lay down the chord progression and work on uh, just playing like I just did. Although like if you're at a spot where you're not ready to, to do that, I would just work on the... that opening statement, it's one, six, two, five in minor. include even chords perhaps in your list and just work on those turnarounds in minor for a little while. And the stuff that I'm playing for you now, uh, if you don't know it, I have so many lessons on this on my uh, Vimeo On Demand uh, Barry Green video lesson site. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm wrapping up a new lesson right now just on turnarounds. Uh, exactly what we're talking about this minute. But that's how I, I do it. If I only had 45 minutes, I'd just limit my time uh, to allow me to get uh, to all of it. Uh, the transcription thing is so important, so I probably would, you know, uh, try to do a half hour of what I just showed you and get as far as I could with the tune without feeling pressured to do the whole thing. I mean, even if it's just a couple of chords or one chord sequence, it's still great practice. But then I would put the, spend the rest of the time, maybe spend 15 minutes transcribing some new stuff, and then another 15 playing along with your transcriptions. You know, it really depends on where you are and what your specific needs are. But hopefully that's helpful. Um, yeah, man. Sorry. Very sorry to lose Chuck, Chuck Loeb. Uh, I didn't get a chance to know him as well as I would have liked, but I used to see um, Chuck and Vic Juris play in Jersey. You know, uh, uh, Ch I'm trying to remember. You know, Vic's older than me, but not much. Um, but I used to go hear him and Chuck at this place called Gulliver's in New Jersey. It wasn't too far from where I grew up. And man, it was just mind-blowingly good. Um, I learned so much from them. And typically, if I were to go in there, they would always be kind enough to let me play like the last tune of the night with them or something like that. Even though I'm not that much younger, it was at a point in my life where it really mattered. <laughs> like every, it was like every week really mattered as far as how well you, know, you could play guitar when you first getting it together so uh, those were really really uh, important things uh, that, uh, memories I'll definitely cherish um, but I had heard about Chuck man even before I had met him even before I met Vic I think people in New York always talked about him as like one of the most versatile guitar players you ever heard and uh, all this kind of stuff and I remember hearing stories like this he could play Hendrix or he could play you know Coltrane and uh, so yeah it's such a such a shitty thing you know cancer um, I'm not sure, Jean, what you're asking. Isn't there a bass student at your college? But 
Uh, um, Yang is saying, I'm transcribing Pat Martino Trio, all blues. Uh, I'm, I'm reading this question. I don't know if you guys, can, hopefully you can see the same question. He's asking about if somebody's playing like a C sharp nine instead of G seven, is it basically he's asking, is it going to conflict with the other guys in the band if they're playing, you know, G? And the answer is no. And I mean, it potentially may be a little rub here and there, but that's good stuff. That's good stuff. But we're just talking about a tritone, and you can, you're always safe subbing a tritone. I mean, if you were really kind of reharming the tune, maybe you'd want to have a conversation with your musicians. But playing the tritone sub is such a common uh, thing that you know you would not have to tell anybody about it. Uh, Robbie Fleming, yes, good lyric. Um, all right, so I've got a re request for Green Dolphin Street. That's a good tune. I haven't played that in a long time. So I'm jumping back to Ableton Live. Same routine. Let me tap in a tempo here. So I'm done. Hearing the other comping from the last tune. Let me get rid of that. So that tapped tempo is about 160. So I'm going to leave this Dijonet. Uh, let me actually see how this sounds. This is a Mickey Roker groove. That might be a little on the slow side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go with that. That is 165. Let me just go through the tune for a second. So I'll do this. I was thinking to myself, should I play it uh, Latin with a Latin feel? But no, I'll just play the straight ahead groove. All right, so uh, here's a couple of choruses of um, Green Dolphin Street.
All right, Green Dolphin Street. Good request <clears throat> from Peter. It's Peter Smart. Uh, thanks, Nalini. Um, Slavo, what is your drum tracking tool? I'm just using loops from uh, a, a phone app called Drum Genius, which is uh, one of the greatest discoveries I've found on the internet. Um, and I've imported them into Ableton Live. If you really want a uh, very detailed look on how I do that, uh, there's um, bonus videos on my Vimeo On Demand page, the Barry Green video lesson page. Uh, whereas a, there's four lessons up there that are, are free. One of them is on technique, which uh, is really popular, but the other three are on like, the technical stuff of what I'm doing right now. So if you're interested, there's a really good video on that. Um, let's see. Juan Carlos is asking for uh, Speak No Evil. It's a great tune. I could definitely try that. I have to go play through that like I always do. Thank you guys for your uh, really, really nice comments. I'm looking for um, other questions that might have come up. Um, <laughs> shot if not I would have the bag it why am I hearing that is that right I'm gonna go for it anyway maybe when I hear the chords it'll all uh, come together so the speak no evil I'm taking a big chance here Wayne shorter let me just uh, find uh, tempo here So that's about 140. Uh, there's a pretty cool Adam Musbaum groove here, but it's really, he plays a, lo the, a lot of cymbals on it. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's, that, that might be fun. So let's try that. So this is Speak No Evil, uh, taking a huge risk on the bridge.
Oh crap, I have the track muted. It's always being like Mr. DJ. Here we go. Sorry about that. Got the wrong drum groove, sorry.
All right, speak no evil. I, 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 that last thing. That's what I missed. E major triad over B flat. That's it. Then that's Wayne Shorter chord. E flat major seven. Sharp nine. Sharp 11. Great tune. Great tune. Uh, hey, Bala, how's, how's it going, man? Thanks, Juan. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Hey, RV, haven't seen you in a long time. Okay, um, I'm gonna call up a, another uh, Ableton Live session. This is, um, like I said, I've got a couple more tunes that I didn't play on the first Facebook Live I, uh, I did last week. And again, uh, just to remind you guys, uh, I'm doing a Kickstarter campaign for a brand new CD. Um, it's, I don't have the link, I should have thought of copying the link so I could paste it for you guys, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the description afterwards. But it's easy to just search Kickstarter and Barry Green and, and it comes right up. Uh, but I've got eight tunes uh, that I'm done writing. I played six of them last week. I'll do the other two today. Uh, I've got a chord melody, which is really, I mean, I wouldn't know how to describe it. I would, it's, not a, it's not a jazz thing. I mean, it's got jazz chords in it, but it's more of a, I don't know. I don't know. I might, maybe I'll play that for you guys too. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty much it. I'm kind of on the fence about maybe composing one more. Uh, but the purpose of me telling this whole story, hopefully it gets you excited about uh, hearing it. But of course, I'm looking for your support uh, on the Kickstarter campaign. So for those of you who already have, thank you very, very much. And I see a lot of names um, right now on the Facebook of people that have. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much. Um, for those of you who haven't, what are you waiting for? Anyway, check the page out. Like I said, there's good things or some really neat things that I'm uh, giving a, uh, to you for your contribution. So, All right, so I've got to open up a new Ableton Live uh, session here. Um, forgive me for doing this computery stuff as I'm searching for this. Okay, so this is, this is a tune. Um, I was telling the people uh, last week that... Um, don't save... I don't have titles for any of these uh, yet. I've got one tune that I played last week, which is a bebop head on the changes to Just Friends. You know, and really kind of a tribute to uh, one of my big guitar heroes, Pat Martino. And, uh, but I named that Not Even Friends, you know, my attempt at humor. And then uh, this one uh, is a blues in F. It's 12 measures, but the blowing changes are different than typical blues. I made it more of a modal kind of um, blowing, as you'll hear in a minute. But um, this one I called Jivin' and Connivin'. And uh, I got that uh, little phrase from uh, Danny Gottlieb, who's uh, a, a drummer, you probably know him. If not, he was on the uh, original Pat Metheny records. But he's also he works with me over at uh, University of North Florida. I'm looking out the window because really, I've just moved and it's, I'm only a mile from work. Uh, I'd like to think I can almost see the place from here. But anyway, um, he was telling me a story and he used that phrase. He's talking about guys that are kind of shady, you know, they're just always driving and conniving, and I thought that was a pretty funny thing. All right, so this is uh, driving, driving and conniving. Let me just make sure that I've got this set up properly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is something that I haven't been able to do before, is I'll play the head for you guys, which is one set of changes, and then I'll press the button on this controller that I just got, which will trigger the uh, blowing changes, which are different. All right. It's kind of a tricky head to play.
That's uh, Jivin' and Conniving. That'll be one of the uh, tunes on this new CD. So hopefully you guys like that. Get excited and help me out with this uh, project. Like I said, I'm about 45% I'm about there with a little less than two weeks. And it's um, all or nothing. In other words, if it doesn't get funded, it doesn't get funded. So I'm, I'm hoping it does, though. So um, like I said, if you have it in your heart, please uh, check it out. James Feeney, what is that voicing for the E flat? Yeah, yes, the, that's the uh, Wayne Shorter chord, I call it. It's just uh, root, three, seven, sharp nine, sharp 11. You get that D major triad on top. You know, if it wasn't for this G natural in here, it, it would just be diminished, like D over E flat. Man, scales. G natural in it, that's not diatonic to the diminished scale, E flat diminished. I have thought about this. The only scale that I've, um, I've seen that this fits in diatonically is G harmonic minor. So it fits in there. So um, with that being said, I have not, I have yet to find a chord that doesn't fit into some scale. I'm sure there are out there. Maybe for some like ultra modern harmony, but for me, uh, it hasn't happened yet. No matter what, it's whatever chord it may have been, it fits somewhere. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Um, so, um, yes, Pascal. Good call, man. Pascal is saying like round midnight intro. It's totally it when Miles goes. <laughs> So, you know, it's, who knows, right? It's such a, such a mysterious chord, you know, you, you wonder, I, my guess is it's, it's Wayne. 
just because it was the way he composed, but who knows? Who's on that recording, man? That's what Train on it still, that Round Midnight recording. I know that for sure. So it's really, I mean, Pascal, you made me really think about um, that now. Who, you know, who knows who came up with that? It's such a interesting sounding chord, so, totally non-traditional, something you would rarely ever, ever see. I mean, that's the only place I came up upon it is, is what Pascal brought up and the Speak No Evil. Uh, but I found myself playing it all the time. As a matter of fact, one of the tunes that I wrote for this record, the ballad, I use it. So in those first, within the first four measures, I'm, I'm using that chord. I just love it. Um, Daniel, thanks, man. He's saying, where should we check for the Kickstarter stuff? Uh, uh, it's an easy search. As a matter of fact, I'll just do it quickly while I'm talking to you guys. And I'll, I'll slap the link up here. Um, but if you just do a search on um, Google, just type in Kickstarter and then uh, Barry Green, um, you, it, just, it comes up right away. But here's the uh, shortened link. Um, where am I? I'm trying to get back to it. So I'm pasting it. This is the short link to the Kickstarter page there that I just put up there. Uh, and, and like when, once I, um, you know, end this video, I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the comments too. I, like I said, thank you, Daniel. I'm so sorry as the whole world is about uh, what happened in Spain yesterday. Um, I've walked that street. It's a, such a beautiful, beautiful place, Barcelona. Um, so uh, wishing you all the best. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Bear. The chromatic scale. <laughs> That's true. James is saying... Yeah, I guess the chromatic scale covers everything. Uh, but definitely, uh, you know, the award goes to Pascal for hearing that, for sure, man. Um, thank you, Larry, for your uh, wishes. All right. Um, like I said, I've got one other one. And let me, let me play this one for you. This, this one is in a tune in three. And I kind of was thinking, I was trying to think kind of like the... Uh, Grant Greenish kind of, it really didn't end up coming out this way, but I was trying to find a real relaxed, just thing in three with some, you know, just real basic harmony that would just be fun to blow over. Uh, that wouldn't require, you know, a whole bunch of brain power and just to relax. And I'm happy with the way it came out. Um, but um, like I said, I think my intention was one thing and what, what I ended up getting was another. Uh, this one, I think I still have to use the lead sheet for. So let me just open this tune that I'm talking about. And like I say, I don't have, this one is just called Tune in Three at the moment until I uh, really sit down and think about what I want to call these tunes. Let's just double check it. All right, so like I said, just to play it safe, I'm going to get the uh, lead sheet up. You know, uh, It's funny too, because this is one of the easier tunes I had written. But uh, that intro thing you just heard, for a minute there, those changes are hard. And I'm still using more of my, uh, the analytical part of my brain and, and chord scale relationship, <laughs> chord scale relationshiping it in order to get through it rather than using my ear. The rest of the tune, you know, any of us will be able to play, but this intro is, is challenging. So anyway, I don't want to give that away because I'm going to want to give that as a gift to those people who, uh, Fun, help fund me on Kickstarter. That's one of the rewards is uh, the CD, of course, and uh, all of the lead sheets, which I am one of them I am looking at right now. So here is Tune in Three, a very inspiring. All right, here we go.
That's that one, tune in three, which I think is going to end up being really nice with the uh, rhythm section. So um, excited about playing that one for sure. Somehow uh, I lost. Uh, no. Okay. Um, thanks, Will. Um, alrighty. Um, 
so I'll sit here. I know this is really way behind as far as there's a really long lag between uh, you guys hearing me and what I'm seeing. So I'll wait a minute or two, but if you guys have any questions, but I think that's the last tune I'll play for today. So between this uh, Facebook Live and the one before this, which are uh, on um, Facebook, of course, but I'm also uh, uploading them to YouTube also. Uh, you can't see it, but right over here is a uh, Zoom recorder where I'm capturing the entire audio of this. So then I download the video from Facebook and bring the, this audio into Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is awesome because it analyzes the uh, audio from both and matches them up. It takes like 10 seconds and the whole thing is totally synced. Then the audio quality is hugely superior, you know. And I'll post that up on uh, YouTube. Um, but like I said, um, I think that this actually audio is for, for a live stream. It's pretty amazing that people all over the world are uh, able to just hang out. Anyway, um, so I think that, like I said, I think that'll do it for me unless anybody has any questions. Um, and I don't see any. So uh, again, my last uh, appeal to you guys for today, check out my Kickstarter page. The link is, uh, I posted it on uh, this chat section here. You can see it. Uh, anything helps, you guys. Uh, but I'm really trying to make that $7,000 uh, um, cap. And I'm about halfway there, like I said. And about halfway through the whole thing. It ends uh, at the end of this month. Uh, to all of you who have um, already uh, donated or funded or supported, whatever you want to say, I appreciate it very, very much. And, and really, I'm looking forward to getting to you what I hope is going to what I hope is going to be like a really great recording, something that I think I'll be really really proud of. All right. Well, uh, that being said, all the best to you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your uh, day or the rest of your night wherever you are in the world, and um, I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.